Hello! This is Carissa from and, Creative Green Living. And Tamara Rubin from Lead Safe Mama. And we are checking out heavy metal test results in vintage mugs and teacups. Wait, don't get the laundry shot. Oh, sorry. Oh, laundry sorry. Shot. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, so we're doing, we've got this one. It's a yellow Pyrex cup. We've got this one. It's beautiful, full design kind of a dark blue this is a super popular butterfly pattern in this really hideous kind of you know diarrhea Mustard. brown um, <laughs> and then then i think this one was also very popular it's that um kind of olive green that's what popular flowers, flowers. i think these are cute they're pink little pink teacups pink, oh, pink teacups and these are all milk glass in case you're wondering they're, none of them are ceramic they're all yeah. milk glass all vintage milk glass with paint yeah, and we might want to show, can you want to flip it around and maybe show it with the light or not? Oh, yeah. Does that work? Yeah, so when you hold them up to the light. Uh, uh, let's see hmm. down a little bit. Oh, down here. Off. So oh. you can see, you see this white dot? That's a place that the paint is really thin and has worn off. And uh, let's see if the other one does that. Yep, so you can see here too, like where these white dots are, like that's just where the paint has worn thin. But when you hold it down here, you know, and you would look at this cup, it doesn't look like it's wearing at all. So if you have Pyrex cups or bowls at home, I would challenge you to do the light challenge and hold it up to that to give you an idea of how much this paint is wearing on the. So we use an XRF instrument, which is an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, to test these. That's the same instrument used by the Consumer Product Safety Commission to test for lead, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury in consumer goods. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to read off the results kind of quickly. Perfect. Is that okay? That sounds good. Okay, so okay, this hold it up. yellow okay. was um, 71,300 parts per million lead. 4,900 parts per million cadmium and 7,166 parts per million arsenic. 7,000 parts then, per million arsenic. I tested the milk glass separately. Y'all, that, <laughs> that's so much toxic crap in and that the, and, and Pyrex says, oh, we've always complied with all regulations. That's because Bullshit. there weren't regulations when this was made. Um, yeah, it's easy to comply when there's no rules. I'm yeah. following the rules, the ones that don't exist. I don't know why I'm so white. It's so terrible. Uh, maybe put it down a little bit. Maybe um, my hair is strong enough. My uh, hair is too cool for There we go. Part. That's better. Um, oh, so no. the white part of it, plain milk glass, people ask about that a lot. On this particular one um, was 202 parts per million lead, 95 parts per million cadmium, and 1,488 parts per million arsenic. So there's arsenic in the actual glass as well as in the paint. Okay. So and to recap, <laughs> if you're new to this, that the level of concern for lead in any item is 90, like nine zero parts per million, and cadmium is 40, four zero. Tell, tell me again. And how so, much yeah, so hundreds the, the, of thousands it had 71, of parts per, parts per million lead and mm. 4,900 parts per million cadmium. That's a lot more than 90. Yeah. And 40. Yeah. And so, and arsenic. Um, that's the amount of lead or cadmium that's considered unsafe for an item intended for children. Yeah. The thing is, cups are not intended for children as no. far as anyone's concerned. Not according to the CPSC, they're not. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so next we did this one, and because the pattern has white in the pattern, it dilutes the reading. So this that's why pretty much the main reason it has a lower reading. Okay. But the lead level on this is 37,900 parts per million. Cadmium is 1,494 parts per million. And the arsenic is 3,847. That's so much. That's a lot. And the um, there was the lead level in the glass was 392 parts per million, and the arsenic in just the plain glass was 1,398 parts per million. 392 parts per million. Then we'll go to the blue flower. Okay. Uh, wait, that was the green flower. We'll go to the blue one. The blue one. This one was um, so the yellow one was 71,300. Mm -hmm. This is. 133,300 parts per million lead. That's a lot of lead. And 2,781 parts per million cadmium. That's also a lot and, of cadmium. I can put this, um, and 10,500 parts per million arsenic. 10,000 parts per million arsenic. So it's like 1% 1, 1 arsenic. And so... Um, <laughs> like a full percent of the paint yeah, is arsenic. Yeah, 13% lead. Lead and arsenic paint. Holy crap. Um, so, mm. so the Drink cadmium... some of that with your coffee in the morning. <laughs> and the thing is, you, your lip touches the... Right. There's no way to the... drink out of that without that touching your mouth. That's part of the problem. Even though they say it doesn't 
poison you, it can't poison you. And we're not saying it does poison you, we're just saying... I don't want it in my house. Yeah, we all have aggregate environmental toxicity exposure from all the different sources. Why would you add this much lead to your life? When lead-free mugs exist. Yes, right? exactly. Like... Uh, and so then the bottom of that was 160 parts per million cadmium and the arsenic was 1,601. So then this one, again, the level's going to be lower because it's just the blue flowers mm -hmm. and pattern. And so it's only 32,700 um, parts per million oh, lead, 559 parts per million cadmium, 4,288 parts per million arsenic, and the plain white is 237 parts per million lead, 72 cadmium, and 1,589 parts per million arsenic. And then we're going to do the butterfly That's one. That's a lot. <laughs> um, should we move like if we move the front, I think it like it, we move what's in the frame and then it adjusts the color based on what color they think things should be. Oh, oh hey, look, that's like, like a vampire, <laughs> like glowing sparkles. So this one's super popular. I think everyone and their grandmother had this. I mean, I I come across this a lot. My grandmother did not have that. It's not very pretty. I mean, it's I guess yeah. I don't know if you like that color. It's all right, I guess. It's very 1971 ish um and it and again it's got the white so it doesn't it's not solid paint like this is solid paint but it's, your mouth still has to touch it to drink out right of it. and it's twenty seven thousand one hundred parts per million lead 464 parts per million cadmium and three hundred three thousand six hundred and ninety seven parts per million arsenic just for comparison so the arsenic is three thousand six ninety seven on the painted part the unpainted part is 1,827 parts per million arsenic. Oh. So there's definitely arsenic in both the paint and, and the in the substrate. Mm. And the cadmium level is only um, 63 parts per million on the milk glass. And there's no lead in this milk glass. No <laughs> lead. Just in the paint. So then the, arsenic and cadmium. The final one I wanted to do, because um, this one wins the prize. Oh, my favorite one <laughs> wins the prize. Yay! Yay! Oh, wait, wins the prize for being terrible, right? Uh, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> um, it has <laughs> um, one hundred and sixty-six thousand two hundred parts per million lead, eight thousand four hundred thirty-four parts per million cadmium, and ten thousand parts per million arsenic. And then wow, um, the it's like sixteen percent lead. And the milk glass also has lead. Oh. Just the white glass is three hundred and thirty-three parts per million lead, and the. Um, the arsenic on the milk glass is 3,189 parts That's per million. That's so much arsenic and lead. Do you guys have these? I don't have <laughs> seen comments from anybody. I'm yeah. Well, so what, when then you wanted to do the, the swabbing, right? So. I did, yes. So um, I'm going to hand the camera to Tamara. Oh, Tamara is going to take the bad, camera. Bad selfie person. Oh, no, me. Look, look, here. And then oh. you can point it at me. Oh, there okay. There okay. Go. So um, I wanted to do, uh, these are lead check swabs, or we also refer to this as reactive agent swab testing. And um, these are really designed to test for paint. And this is paint. Um, so the thing that I want to point out about how we're going to do the test is we're going to test the paint, because that's what it's designed to test. There's a video floating around that Snopes used as evidence that there isn't really lead in vintage Pyrex because somebody rubbed on the inside of the bowl, which is not how you're supposed to do reactive agent swab testing. So it comes in a package like this. They're called um, lead check swabs. They come with these, which um, you should get rid of these. They have lead on them. And if your swab doesn't turn a color, you can test to see if your swab worked on there, but you don't need those. And they have lead dust and you don't need that stuff. Okay. So we are going to, so this is how this works. There's two chambers in here. Um, there's a liquid and a powder and you crush both of them, shake them together. And then to get more tests out of one swab, we are going to use Q-tips and we're going to squeeze the solution into this bowl. And then we're going to use a Q-tip instead of just using this as like a one shot deal. We're going to get multiple shots out of it, but the solution doesn't last for very long. So, um, when you do that, uh, make sure you have your stuff all lined up and ready to go. Okay. Stuff lined up. Q -tips. Ready to go. Okay. So crush. Crush, shake, 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 shake. Okay. And if the swab turns pink or red, that means there's lead in it. Right. And some people think it's confusing sometimes to use uh, something with pink or red paint. But I, I like to um, argue that in fact that pink or red paint usually comes up with a very different color, uh, pink or red, than the positive swab test comes up with. Okay. So we're gonna do. This, the pink one was the one with the most lead, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna rub this on the paint. And we haven't done this before. So no, we haven't done this before. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Rub, 
wrap, 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 wrap. Sometimes happens. Nothing's happening so far, so we're gonna let that one sit. Are you at the same spot? On, or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm gonna let it sit. Um, and the thing that's interesting about this test, this is why we do this test. Um, there's two reasons. One is that um, to show you the correct way to do a reactive agent swab test. Um, but then the other thing is to show you that these swabs are not foolproof as far as testing for um, whether or not there's lead in your mugs um, at home. And so you can do it. And if it turns red, then it definitely has more than 600 parts per million lead in it. And I would personally not want to have my mug that had 600 parts per million lead or more. Um, but these, you know, we tested these with the XRF, which is a precision scientific instrument that told us exactly how much lead, cadmium, arsenic, I don't think any of them had mercury today. No mercury. Um, it'll show us exactly how much is in there. And so if these come up negative, but the other instrument told us exactly how much is in there, then we know that that, um, you know, this isn't always going to tell you. Yeah, this is interesting. So I bet you we're going to do some bowls later if we have time, but yep. the bowls will probably all turn positive. Sorry, my kids are <laughs> trying to photobomb you. Um, Aww. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Charlie melted on the one, floor. One, two, kiddo, two, kiddo. Okay. Um, All right. It's interesting that none so of these are turning positive. This one has like a faint. Uh, no, maybe not. Maybe it's lighting. So it's interesting. It is interesting to me that none of these have swab positive. When I mean, we've done um, vintage Pyrex swab tests before, that have swabbed positive. This one's starting to turn pink. Yeah, and sometimes, even they're meant for, to paint, to test house paint. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so none of these are turning pink. Oh, really. that one is. Look, oh, that one turned pink. That's yeah. totally super red. So <laughs> this is a positive result for sure. So if you were at home and you didn't have access to an XRF, because who has access to an XRF? Most people do not. Um, you could swab, and if it swabs again, then you would know for sure. This definitely has more than 600 parts per million lead, which it does. Um, but a negative test, like this one had more lead than this yellow one. This one had a positive swab. And this one has, oh, there's like the faintest tinge. I don't even know if the camera can see it. There's the faintest tinge of pink on it. It's barely positive. But nothing like this. Nothing like that one. Yeah, and none of these, that one, that one, yeah, that one didn't turn. That one also didn't turn. These ones didn't turn. So um, so we wanted to use that as a demonstration, especially for um, Snopes. <laughs> that just because you reactive agent swab test something and it comes out negative doesn't mean that it's actually negative. And so using a precision scientific instrument like an XRF lets you see exactly how much of each different heavy metal is in there. So Yeah, um, and just yeah. because it's negative doesn't mean there's not a problem with it. Right, exactly. And, <laughs> and we're not saying that these will poison you, but we are saying that there's a concerning amount of lead. It is a lot more than um, I would personally want in my home and that Tamara would personally want in her home. And like with um, this one, you got, you know, this bright pinkish red and that is on the yellow that goes up against your lip. So. Right. And so the other thing about that is if the way that this works is the paint had to rub off of the cup and onto the Q-tip in order to have a reaction. And so if it's capable of rubbing off onto a cotton swab, it's likely capable of rubbing off onto your mouth or into your dishwasher or into your sink or scrubbing off of the sponge when you're washing the dishes. Um, so if you can get it to turn red, that's extra alarming to me because that tells me that that paint can come off the glass. It's not permanently bound to the glass and um, is available to get inside your body. I, and there we go. And All right. Do you want to flip this around? Here yeah, yeah, let's flip this see. around. <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool. Well, thank Remind you guys me. for watching. Yeah, thank um, you. I don't see any comments, which makes me feel like the comments are broken. And then we'll share it. Sorry. Tomorrow. Okay, so we'll, if you asked me a question and I ignored you, I'm really sorry. And I'll go back and answer your question uh, later. Yeah, and uh, just we recommend avoiding vintage Pyrex. Yeah, I don't recommend vintage Pyrex in any context. <laughs> at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, for more information about lead and vintage Pyrex, you can go to Tamara's website. Well, at leadsafemama.com, but mm -hmm. I started a new uh, lead and vintage Pyrex page. Oh, right? on Facebook. So, so you can go there We'll link too. to that. <laughs> I'll come back and edit the description of the video. So lead and vintage Pyrex, yeah. you can follow there. And then I also, if you go to my website, which is creativegreenliving.com, and you search for Pyrex, there's two different articles about lead and Pyrex that you can read about that and then share with your friends. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. Bye. Have a good night.